But yeah, so a little bit of a story time. I've told this story on stream a million times, but I have not told it for my new audience. I have four copies of this game, or I have owned at one point four different copies of Monster Rancher 2. Uh, I currently own three. But I own my first one, and then me and my friend traded games for two weeks, or it might have been closer to like a month or something, because he got Legend of Dragoon, and I was getting bored of this, and he was getting bored of Legend of Dragoon, and so we swapped games, and then I, I beat Legend of Dragoon, blah, blah, blah. I beat Legend of Dragoon, and I was like, okay, that's cool, I'll, um, we'll swap games back now, and he was like, okay, awesome, and then he couldn't find the disc, and he's like a good friend of mine, he wouldn't like fuck me over, we were only like 11 or 12 years old, so this was only like a year after the game came out, my mom searched high and low to find it for me, got it for me for a birthday present, I was so happy, and then... Uh, I'd only had it for a couple of months, and then he couldn't find the game. And I was like, well, what the hell? Like, what do you mean you can't find the game? What had happened is he had traded in his PS1 at a GameStop for a PS2, because, like, PS2s were just coming out at the time. And he had accidentally left my copy of Monster Rancher 2 in the CD tray when he sold it. And the lady at the counter ripped him off and didn't tell him the disc was in it. So she got like a free hundred dollar game and uh, we didn't realize this is what had happened until later. And then it was like, oh fuck, I can't believe that's what happened. That's so scummy. Trip stabs, I'm still alive, we're still hanging out. And so I just lost the game and it was impossible to find it anywhere. eBay was like, you know, eBay was coming up in popularity, but it was not a thing that like older people were like really comfortable with. So like I I would see games on eBay and my mom's like, you're fucking nuts if you think I'm putting my credit card info online. Like I'm never doing that. Also, that was real close. That was real close, but we did it. Um, and uh, so yeah, so I never got anything like that. And then when I was in grade 11, so a good six years later, um, I get my second copy of the game because I got a job got my own money, and I do a government-issued, like, mail-order check, send it out on eBay to get a copy of Monster Rancher 2. The whole time I was waiting to get that game, uh, between being 12 years old and between being 17 years old, I spent so much time on Monster Rancher Metropolis looking up stuff, figuring out how to unlock Zilla, figuring out how to unlock Durahan, monsters I had never been able to find or raise or figure out like how to get them. And uh, so it was like Christmas when that game came in and I was able to unlock all the monsters for the first time. And it was awesome until the game was so fucking scratched that only about half the monsters in the game would load. If I had to load a Swayzo, the game would freeze up. If I had to load um, the Joker mask, the game would freeze up. If I had to load the birthday cake item, the game would freeze up. So I always had to send my monster on an errand tree to avoid getting a birthday cake. Kato for Matt Moore. Um, but what really sucked, what really did me in, is that the Undine Slate would break my game. And the Undine Slate is how you get Nighton, and Nighton is my favorite monster, so I was just, like, dejected. I was, like, I waited all this time, I finally get it, and this game doesn't work. And I was frustrated, but I... I played it. I still played the game. I still, like, learned how to raise better monsters, and... Here's how fucked up the game was. The game was so scratched that what would happen is... In a PS1, if it's... the laser is trying to read the disc, it goes for a pass, and if it doesn't read anything, it stops for a second, and then it goes, okay, I'm gonna try it again. And so it would do it again. And so if it was trying to read a part of the disc that had an especially deep scratch, it would just instantly do that. You'd hear the, the disc wind up, and then wind down, and then wind up, and then wind down. And what I would have to do is I would have to physically hold my PS1 and tilt it in different directions until the laser caught the disc and was able to read it. And sometimes it never worked, and sometimes it did work. So for most of the time, my PS1 was on like a 45 degree angle up against my TV, because that's what worked most of the time. And then I would have to like physically manhandle it, like I'm playing one of those like little labyrinth games that you would get at like, you know, fucking Happy Meal, trying to get the, the ball through the maze. And uh, I was like, this is brutal. 
And then, so I bought a third copy, and I was like, it can't be worse, right? My second copy did the exact same thing, but it was a completely different set of monsters and items that broke the game. So between two physical copies of the game, I had one working version of the game. I had one copy of the game where I couldn't get Niton and Undine. I had one copy of the game where I couldn't get a dragon. One copy I couldn't play Swayzo on. One game I couldn't get a Mochi on. So between the two of them, I had a full game. Between the two of them, I had everything, but it was just not like a complete experience. And so I had written, like, I made like a mark on one of them, and I was like, this is like the one where I can't get Suezo, and like, this is the one where I can't get Mochi. And then, uh, so between the two of them, I could play. And then it was, it was, it, just, it sucked. It was fucking awful, you know? And uh, finally, I have a now a proper working version of the game. I got it for like my 22nd birthday for my cousin or something. But my 22nd birthday was in 2012. So that's 13 years after the game came out. I finally have a copy of the game that works. And uh, damn dude, like what an ordeal, you know? Like $500 spent on this game.